Hello everybody, today we're reviewing a chicken coop. We just bought it a few weeks ago because our chickens were needing a little bit more space and we're also thinking about getting more chickens. So we decided to get something with more capacity. We got the Superior Construction Chicken Coop and we got it at Tractor Supply Co. for, I think we paid $550. Uh, when I look online, I see it for $499. So it looks like it varies from $599.99 to $499.99. And we got it for somewhere in between there. They didn't offer us delivery from Tractor Supply Co., but we were able to rent a trailer. And actually, we had a coupon to rent the trailer from them for free. The box is pretty big, 76 inches long and I would say about four feet tall, so 48 inches tall. The biggest challenge with it was people helped us load it onto the trailer, but when we got it home, it was just my wife and I, and we could barely lift it. So I would consider us average strength. We're not you know, super fit. So keep that in mind. You might need a third person to get it off of your truck or trailer. Because it was so heavy, we knew we had to build it on location. While you guys watch the construction, I want to tell you some stuff about the chicken coop. So it says it's 200% thicker wood. To me, that's a little arbitrary. It does say that the boards are 15 millimeters thick instead of 7.5 millimeters. To me, they looked like if they were any smaller, it would be very problematic. So I don't know who builds them with smaller panels than what they have. But, you know, 200% thicker wood, so, okay. Durable plastic roof, in my experience, the roofs will last a few years. Over time, the heat and sun will damage them and they get brittle and start to crack. I took an extra step and put silicone sealant over every screw that was in the plastic panels just to give it extra protection from moisture getting into the coop. It says easy assembly, and as you can see from the time-lapse video, we made pretty steady progress. I would agree that it was pretty easy to build. The instructions are in six steps. I wish they had more steps because one step includes so much stuff that it's a little bit confusing and you can't see all the components because some of the components are covered by other parts. And so separated steps would have made it a little bit easier, I think. But it did make it seem easier because only six steps, that's pretty good. All right, so it says unstained wood and customized to fit your style. So it's presenting the fact that it's not painted as an advantage or something that's beneficial to us, but that's fancy marketing in my opinion because if they could at least primer it or make it a, a generic color, it could have been protected from all angles. But now that it's assembled, there's certain areas that we're not going to be able to paint. So it's not going to be as protected, especially on the very bottom, which I think is a very critical area for it to be stained. We could have painted it prior to building it, but we had an experience with a barn door that we built in our house that when we painted it, it warped. And we were concerned about that. So we opted to build it first and, and then we're going to try and paint it this coming weekend. So, you know, I don't consider that an advantage. Clearly, they could have at least put some kind of primer on it, but it is what it is. It wasn't a deal killer for us in this case. Precision matters. So as I'm showing in the video here, on the bottom edge, the ground wasn't perfectly even. I was about a half an inch off. But by being a half an inch off when I put two panels together to screw it into one, it made it so that there wasn't a gap on the ground. So I saw that as an advantage and I figured that wouldn't make a big difference when building the coop, but it ended up being a big issue and I had to make modifications to the coop to make it fit overall. So. Be really careful, make sure your, your ground's really level so that when you build it, you won't have issues like I did. It ended up being about an inch and a half gap in the very top of the coop. And the concern is that a rat, certainly a mouse could squeeze through there. Okay, so doing a little bit of a walk around here on the coop, you can see that we have it butted up against our bigger chicken run. So we're gonna eventually interconnect the two units and the chickens are gonna be able to come and go safely as they please. We've buried the chicken run about 18 inches underground and put rocks all the way around. Hopefully that will prevent digging animals from getting into the coop. This should keep foxes out and anything smaller than that, all the way down to snakes, mice, and rats. So the chicken coop, you can see there, there's an air vent so we can open and close it as necessary. Here's the area where it was a little uneven on the ground. I adjusted it so that it would not be an issue on the ground, but then there's this gap above here that was a side effect of that. I had to cut the top part 
so that this would fit. You can see it's not perfectly lining up there. And uh, we are concerned maybe about a mouse or something being able to squeeze through that area, but we're gonna try and uh, seal that up with a piece of wood or something like that. Here, we're gonna open up this panel. They're very tight. I'm assuming that over time it will get a little bit looser, but we have been struggling for this door specifically to get the little latches opened up. But check this out. You open it up and it drops all the way down and it's gonna be really easy to just scoop out the bedding. There's our Silky, her name's Taco. <laughs> she's laying on two eggs. So she's got about another week to go before they hatch. If they are fertilized, we're not entirely sure. She's been broody before. Um, but you can see it's very spacious in there. This is made for eight to 10 chickens. So we are looking at increasing our flock. And I think that this is gonna be a good step in getting that done. Okay, locking that up and moving around the coop some more. There's an access panel here. This lets us take a peek inside, do some cleaning, make sure everything's okay in there. The chickens have already been pooping in it. We've just had it built for one day. Again, very spacious. I'm not sure how 10 chickens would fit in here, but we're gonna start by ramping it up to six, seeing how it works out, and then maybe getting two to four more. This door right here I really like because of course it's access for the chickens to get outside and roam around. We like to let them out in the evenings when we can keep an eye on them, but also I can get all the way in there to clean and make adjustments to the coop. So that's gonna be a big advantage over the other coop where I can crawl and get my hand in there pretty far, but I can't get in the coop all the way. You can see here it's very spacious. We use a feeding bucket system and it prevents the chickens from fighting versus a trough and it makes it hard for the rats to get into the chicken food which is really good. So there's the ramp. We're going inside of the chicken coop area again. It is pretty spacious and plenty of ventilation as well. I like the high ceilings. I think that that'll also help keeping that heat off of the chickens in the summer. The construction is pretty good overall. I am very pleased so far with the coop and its quality. Here's gonna be a nice addition to the coop. There's our smaller chicken coop. I will do a review on that one down the road. That one is gonna be for our smaller Sarama chickens. We'll probably have four to six of them in there. But right now we have two hens and this little rooster here. <laughs> who thinks he's top dog, but he's he's a little guy. He does, he does the best he can. So we're gonna cut a hole here in this mesh and then seal the two so that nothing can get in between, but the chickens can come and go as they please. So, uh, and by the way, the pole on the other side, that's our uh, outdoor thermostat system. Once this is all built, we'll have heat lamps and heating panels inside each coop. And the thermostat automatically turns on and off the heating system. Uh, as necessary. You set a threshold for temperatures so it turns on and off as necessary. We're very happy with the coop. I'm very excited to start adding to our flock. We're looking forward to or having more egg production and I think it looks nice on our property. It's not super terrible looking anyway. It should hold up in the rain and the snow uh, so we're really looking forward to enjoying the coop overall.